I'm going to tell you how to murder someone. And I promise you that you'll never be caught. You'll never serve time. You'll never see a judge. Write this down. First of all, you need to get on a plane and go to Africa. AIDS, malaria, civil war has killed millions of Africans, so the world's not going to notice if a few more disappear. Go to a place in Africa where there's no roads and zero communication and start killing. Don't kill one person, kill thousands. You could almost get away with killing a million people, and the world won't care because they won't know. And if word eventually does get out that you've been killing them, a few people will care, but not enough to do anything about it. If you do this, I promise you, you'll get away with murder. If this upsets you to hear, then you might know what I wake up to for the last seven days once I heard about this man named Joseph Coney. This man, Joseph Coney, has been kidnapping, raping, and literally getting away with murder for 25 years. He is wanted by the International Criminal Court five years ago, and they still can't get him. My name is Jason Radical Russell. I'm exactly who you think I am, a middle-class kid from San Diego, California. I like to surf and make movies. I'm currently listening to Mumford & Sons and Lady Gaga. And I'm a millennial, so I grew up in the 80s and 90s thinking that I could change the world because my generation, the millennials, have always been connected. And I believe we will change the world because of this connectivity. It has limitless power. I went to USC's film school with a dream to make Hollywood musicals. And I took a trip with some friends to Africa and ended up in northern Uganda, where I met this boy. This boy is named Jacob. He's my friend. He likes soccer, he's wise, he's funny, he listens to Lady Gaga. But unlike me, he was abducted by Joseph Kony and his rebel army. He was turned into a child soldier, and he was forced to witness his brother being slaughtered to death. And then he escaped, and he told me this story, and it changed my life forever. Because after he told it to me, I made a promise to him that I would do everything that I could in my power to stop Joseph Kony, not knowing what that meant. Seven years later, Jacob and I are still friends. I go to Uganda and visit him. He comes to America and visits me. And we have a lot in common. We both use Facebook to connect with each other. He tells me about his midterm exams and what girl he might or might not have a crush on. We are connected. Our generation's cares go beyond family and beyond nation. It is not just language or, or patriotism that unites us anymore. We are united by humanity. We are united by the internet. We are united by Lady Gaga. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Now, but here's a tricky thing. The governments and institutions of the world have done a really good job at coming up with excuses. These are the excuses or arguments that they used to why they can't get Joseph Kony. The United Nations is just a meeting place, they tell us. It's not in America's interests. It's true. Who's going to pay for it? And these excuses stem from the fact that all governments in the world are designed to be self-interested. And that used to be a good thing until our generation showed up and rewrote these excuses to say the United Nations is not just a meeting place. Human security is in America's interests. Who's going to pay for it? She is. Her name's Natalie. She's a millennial. She has friends in Rwanda and Mexico and Germany. And what happens to her friends affects her. It matters to her. She doesn't have a lot of money, raised in inner city Chicago. But she finds a way, along with 10,000 other young people, to donate $12 a month to rescue Joseph Coney's child soldiers. Now, Natalie came to Invisible Children, our organization, with a mission to rescue Joseph Coney's child soldiers. And when she came to us two years ago at 18 years old, we were trying to do the impossible, and millennials love the impossible. We were trying to pass a bill through Congress, and this bill would require the Obama administration to remove Joseph Coney from the battlefield, to work with local, regional, Ugandan, Congolese governments to remove Joseph Coney from the battlefield. And you know what everyone told us in DC? They said, this is going to be impossible. 
because for those of you that don't know, only 3% of bills that are introduced into Congress ever make it to the president's desk for signing, 3%. So we knew we had to do something big. In cities all over the world, we had an international event called the Rescue of Joseph Kony's Child Soldiers. And this event's main focus was to get this bill to be noticed. So we needed media's attention, and you guys know this, in order to make noise, you need politicians and celebrities to come out and speak on your behalf in order to rally everyone, write letters. And Natalie said, send me to Chicago. That's where I'm from, and I know who I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get Oprah Winfrey. And we're like, okay. So, <laughs> you're 18, go for it. She had 2,000 people come out, here's what happened. Oprah didn't show up. So this is where we meet her, on the streets of Chicago, trying to figure out what to do. You would think that 300 people parading around Chicago would get attention. It didn't. We're still trying to call these news stations because they were just blatantly ignoring us. Keep calling the news stations, keep calling the senator's offices, keep calling Oprah's main switchboard. I mean, I've done everything I can to get Oprah, but she's a pretty powerful woman and I'm one 18-year-old. I was angry and I was frustrated and I was emotional and I was exhausted. I've never been in charge of something in my life. We are gonna stay. We're gonna give up whatever it takes, a week of comfort, to be living out here like these kids so someone hears our voice. I feel like if a child in East Africa, at the age they're able to carry a gun, they're able to be abducted and forced to kill. I feel like as soon as we're able to use our voice or speak, we should use it on behalf of other people that can't do themselves. And here's what happened. On the sixth day, she said, let's surround Oprah Winfrey's studio. And that's what we did. We stood there at four in the morning and we went like this, peaceful protest. And we had a t-shirts on with the guns on the front. And Oprah Winfrey walked out by herself and said, I'm gonna put you on live in one hour. Forget Ellen and Hugh Jackman, you're on. And so that's what she said. She gave us eight minutes to plead our case. And before you know it, a week later, the bill had made its way through Congress. One year from that event, we were in the Oval Office, a part of that 3%, as he signed our impossible bill into law. And Barack Obama, <laughs> President Barack Obama said, you tell Jacob if you ever see him again that the President of the United States is going to do something about it. But this talk is not about Oprah. It's not about Obama, it's not about a bill. It really isn't. It's about Natalie and hundreds of thousands of young people like her who are doing something about this madman named Joseph Coney who has been getting away with murder. And this is not just invisible children, it's not just the American youth. We take the $12 that, we're, that we have from Natalie and 10,000 other people and we've gone to the Congo to build these radio towers because Joseph Kony's killing Congolese right now, today, as I speak. These radio towers communicate with the villages that are being affected so that they can talk to each other. And when the LRA come and attack and try to murder, they can escape and flee from abduction before they get there. This movement is international and it is generational because we are brothers and sisters with these Congolese who are being slaughtered. And these millennials are talking to the institutions and the governments and pleading, saying, please catch up or continue to be bypassed because our generation will no longer let Joseph Kony or anyone like him to get away with murder, especially our friends. If you would like to join this movement, please email me, radical at invisiblechildren.com. I would love to send you the movie so you could share it with 10,000 of your friends and continue this story. Thanks for listening.